Hey everybody, I'm Severely Mame, and today we're going to get into another knitting roundup. Now if you're not familiar with my knitting roundup videos, I've done them in the past where I just show you all of the knitting projects that I'm currently working on all in one video instead of having individual ones for them. Now, all of the projects I have also, I don't have enough video content on when I was making them to do individual ones, so I just wanna include it all right here now for you to enjoy. Now my last knitting oriented video was my 24 hour knit challenge. I'll link that up here in a card and also down in the description. That was where I tried to finish my frozen sweater in a 24 hour window. Now, it was a pretty bold decision to try and do that. I ended up not meeting my deadline, but the first thing I'm going to show you in this knitting roundup is the finished frozen sweater. Here it is fully pieced together. It is got a long sleeve with, there's a lot of room in the shoulder um, on this sweater, which I'm really happy about. It came together pretty well. Here's the back. The neckline was challenging and is verging on too tight, but I can get my head through it. I think that it's something that I have to put on before I put on makeup, um, and I cannot like have my hair styled before I put it on because it really will yank down over it. But it does fit. I think that one addition that it needs is a shoulder pad, which is a dream for me. That is how I prefer my garments with shoulder pads. So I think that in the future, I'm going to knit a pair to go in this sweater. I have leftover yarn, so that would be perfect. Let me know down below if you're interested in how I would go about making shoulder pads uh, for a knit. But with that, here is the finished frozen ish sweater for you. I'm very happy with how it turns out. It actually fits me even with my weight gain, but with the weather, uh, I will not be wearing it for quite some time. It is been in the 90s for the last week, so there will not be much for knitwear in my future, which is fine. I, I knew that that would be the case, but I, yeah, I wanted to show you this one all finished up. Uh, one thing I do have to do to it still is block it. I want to block this one wet um, and then dry up my mats. I don't have right now. They are at my old house, so I just have to grab those next time I go over there. Um, and then I will do that. If you want to see that in a video, let me know down below. I can maybe do the shoulder pads and the wet blocking all in one for everybody to watch. So this one is officially a finished project with the ability to have additions, so that barely means anything, I guess. Now I'm going to move on to a quick, a much quicker pattern, or, well, I don't think it would be much quicker. That one was fairly simple. This one I just did very fast. Um, you, this is the, all of the pieces of the Susan Crawford Gay Bolero. I'll put a photo of that here. Um, I've finished this one with the exception of blocking and piecing it all together. I've knit all of the components. So this one I was trying to finish for the Bolero knit along that Bex the Femme and KB Stitches were doing on Instagram, but I finished knitting all the pieces and then I got a little weary with not wanting to rush my piecing together. So I put it down and told myself that I will finish it correctly and not rush uh, because I want this to be a piece that I love and wear regularly. And I think it really will be. So how the pattern has you knit it first is you knit the fronts as separate pieces. I already have them stitched together, but this will, you know, be the front of this little bolero. I think the size is going to be right for me, which is great. This is a Susan Crawford pattern from an original 1940s one. I love this angle. How you do this is like, the cast on numbers I felt like were so huge, but it was because you're casting on from here 
all the way down to here. And then you are knitting them straight and doing decreases to create this right angle um, while using combinations of knit and purls in the stripes to get the effect of the main color bubbling out. This just is like so pretty. I'm really, really happy with it. And I can't wait to piece it together. I sat down and try and like read how Susan Crawford has it done. I think I'm going to see if there's any videos online because I want to do it right. Now this is the back piece. There is no uh, like angled parts of this one. This is just straight striping so this went fairly quick. Um, once you get this pattern down it moves so easily uh, that I spent very little time on the back of this piece. Uh, I think I did the front two pieces in like a couple weeks um, a while back because uh, we had I had this yarn and I got these Susan Crawford books and I was like you know a bolero is perfect for Arizona because sometimes you're indoors and the air conditioning is almost too intense so I felt like a short sleeve bolero might be something I will actually use in the near future the yarn was already in my stash. It's both a Knit Picks yarn. Uh, it's in palette. The colors I don't remember off the top of my head. I'll put those in the description. Um, so I've, I knit all of those up. And then the sleeves are made up of three separate pieces. So this will be the sleeve center. And then they both have that great little angle that will wrap around the arm. And down the middle of that, you have a small secondary color stripe that will get sewn in between them so that when it stretches open, you'll still have the striping, even though it is two different pieces. So for each sleeve, three pieces are knit. This took me a minute, but the sleeves go very quickly especially after you've done that front body because you're doing the same thing but on a smaller scale. So I finished all of knitting these pieces together. I was talking to my friend Bex from Subversive Femme about being a little weary on piecing it together because I want it to be right. With the stripes, I have to meet them up on the side of the body. And I can't decide if I would use if I would change my yarn while I'm seaming these pieces for every color that I'm seaming up. Let me know what you think down in the description or in the comments because I still haven't made a full decision on what I'm gonna do. If I'm using something like a back stitch, that doesn't matter as much because it won't be super visible, but if I am seaming it together where it could be seen, I am gonna have to change colors. So let me know if you've made this especially what you did. Um, I'm really excited about finishing up this bolero, but like I said, I'm not trying to rush it because I want it to be done well. So how I'm going through all these projects is like what level of finished am I at? So my next one is one that you maybe haven't seen in a very long time. Uh, this is a bed jacket from a Susan Crawford pattern. I go, like, she's one of my go-to pattern people because she makes such a good size range that I actually fit into. Uh, so this one I started back when I think I first moved to Arizona. This was just like a busy project um, that I wanted for, I think, a Disney look for when we usually go in November because it gets a little chilly at night. So the idea of a, like, little bed jacket that is supposed to be hooded. Um, so here's the hood piece. It is three quarters of the way done. And once I finish knitting this, I will be able to attach it. And then I attach a ribbon around that will come to the neck to tie. And this one will be completely done. Now right now I have decided before I'm allowed to cast on anything else, I need to finish this bed jacket pattern which I will put the link to this um, in the description. This is on Susan Crawford's Ravelry, or at least was when I bought it. I think it still should be. 
Um, this one was just, I like a l nice lace pattern. I hadn't done one in a while. And the hard part about putting down a project with a lace pattern is that you can lose track of where you are, but also just the muscle memory of how to do it. And that was some, a problem I've run into this one. Every time I try and pick it up, I'm like having to read through each stitch pattern, like trying to remember how to do it. And it takes me a long time and I'm just like, oh, I'll get back to it. But I think now I am ready to just get all of these whips done and out of my pile and into my closet. Uh, this yarn is a synthetic fingering weight. It's called Wool Like, I think. Uh, I got it at Michael's years ago. It was inexpensive and it is actually extremely soft and not super hot. So it is a good choice for like a little bolero here. I will put it on when the AC is a little chilly, even though it's unfinished. It does the trick because I pieced it all together a while back um, with the exception of the hood. Now on to another project that I've mentioned, but not in quite some time, that I actually just picked back up. This is the mohair two-piece sweater that I started quite some time back. Now this one is, the front is completely done. And then if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen quite some time ago that I was almost completely finished with the back piece and I ran into a counting issue where I started my increase for this little arm too late. I miscounted rows and I could not rip back this yarn so I had to completely throw it away. Um, so that made me have to restart it, which I restarted it and got some done, but I was just so discouraged that I put it down and focused on other projects. And I also had my suit going at that time, which was my main focus. Now I picked it back up just this week and I, it was maybe somewhere around here. And I've gotten up to where I'm working on to the sleeve. Now I have had a couple issues um, in doing the knitting back and front. I my brain can't remember how to do it and I'm like looking at this thing while I'm doing it and thinking I'm doing it right and then it's incorrect. So I have to do a little repair here of where I had to kind of ladder it back down to look right with the rest of the sweater. Um, and otherwise it's fine. Like I would normally rip back and fix that but with this yarn I know I can't rip it back because the yarn will actually just snap and it becomes a giant mess and I get very sad and I have to start over and I don't have enough yarn to start over on another piece so I'm going to let it live with the small imperfections that are here uh, and honestly I will just wear the imperfect side to the back uh, which if you're looking that closely at the detail of the back of my sweater that I'm wearing probably just like casually in the middle of the day stop just stop looking at my clothing that closely I think as a general rule stop looking at my clothing that closely because it's all you know old or made by me so there's gonna be some flaws uh, but this one I've only got probably a few hours of work left and then I just gotta seam it up which is exciting because this I probably won't be able to wear for a while unless I go out like in the evening in the near future. Uh, now that my partner and I are fully vaccinated and have been for a while, we're experimenting with outings. Uh, we went to an outdoor movie this week um, and it was socially distanced and everyone was wearing masks. It was, you know, fun. Uh, so if we do something like that again where I'm outdoors in the evening I might be able to get one more wear out of that So I think I'm going to push that project through and try and get it done this week um, I can link that pattern down below that was from pretty old patterns on Etsy uh, Who I never bought from before but this pattern was great and they had the like 
vintage to modern needle size conversion in the directions, which is always really, really nice. Next up, and a little tip for you, when you are not working on a knit project, utilize your shoe boxes, this one is from Remix Vintage, um, to store your, your whips. So, this one you guys have seen in the past, it is the striped 40s sweater from Subversive Femme. Again, I will link this one in the description. I talked about this in the past, so I'm not going to go into it much. But I have the front piece done. Uh, I realize these striped colors are very uh, Harry Potter house, um, which is fun and cute. Um, I have a bunch done for the back piece. I probably only have a few more inches to knit before I finish that up. And then I have to do the sleeves. So that should be a quick project to finish. It's kind of lower on my priority, even though it is a short sleeve sweater. Between the colorway and the density of the yarn, it probably won't be something I wear until the fall. But I still just want to get it done before I start up anything too new. This one... I'm going to glaze over quickly because I've talked about it a few times. It's the hat that I knit to go with my suit. It is obviously unfinished. I have not picked it up in quite some time. Um, but it'll be cute when it's done. It'll be a little fez. Um, I think this is, pattern was from my vintage, my vintage Wish. Something like that on Etsy. Again, it will be linked below. It's a cute little fez hat. The pattern comes with a couple other designs too. Um, this is a winter hat that I will not need until end of December, January, but, um, it would be nice to just get it off the needles and into my hat collection, but this is a low priority also because it is not anything that I will be wearing anytime soon because of the weather. I think that there will probably be a little bit of a shift coming in content from knitting to more sewing oriented things because summer here, it's hot. I'm in the desert. Uh, so holding and having wool resting on me is not super appetizing. Uh, it just makes me feel sweaty and sad. Uh, so I will probably be doing less knits once I kind of get through this pile of whips. Um, the next one I haven't shown you guys at all, so that's exciting. I may have talked about it in a past video. It is another Susan Crawford pattern from the 40s. It is a little zigzag stripe uh, with a lace detail. It is just such a pretty pattern. I'm really excited about it. I know it's going to be really bulky looking on me, but I'm fine with that. This part gets like gathered. Um, but these were colors, the main body color is leftover yarn from my suit and I'm doing this intentionally because I feel like if I don't want to wear the suit jacket, I can have a short sleeve sweater that matches it and I honestly almost always pair my greens with a black, as you can see now, when it comes to clothing so and accessories so I can wear a like black belt and earrings and bangles with this and it will be a different set and look like a dress. Um, so that's why I'm utilizing the excess yarn I have for that for this project and I'm really excited that then I'll have the hat that I can wear with the sweater and I can do any skirt or I can mix and match whatever I have from this yarn. I actually thought about for a second buying a little bit more so I could make like a little waistcoat to also wear with the skirt so I could do maybe a button up blouse with a waistcoat, the skirt as a combo um, for future outfits. Now this one, this pattern, I have trouble memorizing when I'm working on it. I put it down to work on the bolero and now it is like not super high priority but I do love how it looks. So I will be getting back to this one for sure. 
Uh, it's another short sleeve, so it's something I'll be able to wear in the fall. Um, so with how little knitting I do in the summer, I've got to kind of keep this one in my memory. Uh, this yarn is left over from my suit, so I don't remember exactly what it was. If I can find it, I will put it down in the description for you guys. And, and last, I have a little bit of an unboxing of sorts. Now, uh, I, one day, I was on Instagram, and I had just followed Knit Picks on Instagram because I use their stuff so often, and I had tagged them in something. I was like, oh, I didn't realize I wasn't following them. Well, days later, they had a sale, and the sale was just on green yarn. And I really felt like they were distinctly coming for me. So, of course, I checked out what they had and didn't fall in love with any of the colors, with the exception of one yarn. And so I, have, I bought the Brava Bulky Weight. And it is in the color, I think it's avocado. Yes, avocado. So this yarn I bought to make a winter coat, which you're probably thinking, why? Why would you buy yarn to make a winter coat at the beginning of summer in Arizona? Because it was on sale is why. Um, it is a synthetic yarn, but because I'm going to be making like an outerwear piece, I felt like that was totally appropriate for the instance uh, this way, if I like need to wash it or anything, I can. Um, Cause it is just a synthetic, like it's all acrylic, it's super soft. Um, but I just needed some bulky weight to do a Susan Crawford box coat pattern. I'll put a photo of that here. Um, so I bought, I think 15 skeins of this yarn. My, I haven't unboxed. I got this actually a little while ago, but I haven't really opened it I'm quite soon and like looked I got 14 of these so I'm, I think I needed tw like 12 but I got extra just in case um, and this is a very low priority project but I want to have it started around my birthday in August so ideally I'll get a bunch of this other stuff that I've shown you done and then get on to the box coat uh, but I'm really in love with this yarn color. I think it will be very, very cute for a winter coat. And I wanna find like a big brown baked by button, uh, cause it has a button like closure that goes across the chest. Um, so that will be fun to hunt that down until uh, this coat is finished. But that was your knitting roundup update on all of my current projects. I actually don't think I have any projects that I didn't show you right now, which uh, is crazy because usually there's like one I didn't feel like looking for or something. Um, now my yarn stash has some future projects sitting in it, that's for sure. And um, I know that I have a pink yarn of this same mohair variety that I want to make a little like nod to Ed Wood and his pink Angora sweater, but I haven't decided out of what, so that's gonna stay in there for a while. And make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit that bell notification if you wanna to be told whenever I post something new, and if you wanna help contribute to videos like this and all of my creative endeavors, you can follow the link below to my Patreon and get some exclusive content and help me decide on what comes out here on my channel. I'm Severely Mame, thank you guys for watching.